good morning. Uh, this is our annual Bloomberg Library um, Grand Rounds. Uh, we do this, we try to do this every year to get you up to speed with what's going on in the library. And, and today we're really uh, excited because we're, we've got, there are three of us that are speaking. Uh, first will be Christy Jarvis, and I'm going to introduce her. Brian Jones from the research side, and then I'm going to give you an update about what's new in our library and a little bit about novel. Uh, but Christy Jarvis is a wonderful resource. You get, have to get to know her. She did her undergraduate work at uh, the State University of New York in Buffalo and got her Library uh, of Science master's degree at San Jose State. And she is the Information Specialist Library for Eccles Health Sciences Library. And um, there is one or two things she's going to tell us today that could change your career uh, or at least make it a lot easier to keep writing papers. So, Christy. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I am fairly new here at the university. I've only been here about eight months, so I haven't had a chance to meet a lot of you yet. Um, but I'm looking forward to working with you in the future. Again, my name is Christy Jarvis. Um, I've been asked to kind of talk a little bit about the resources that are available at the university, and most importantly, how you access those resources. Because if we have them available and you can't get to them, it doesn't do anyone any good. This is an overview of some of the things I'm going to talk about today. Um, I'm going to talk about how you access things remotely, the databases that are available, e-books that are available, e-journals that are available, and most importantly, how you get to those e-journals. Um, I'll talk quickly about interlibrary loan and document delivery, and then ways that the library can help you. So the first thing I want to talk about is remote access, because even though I'm sure that everyone here is very dedicated to their job and their patients and their research, at some point, I hope you go home or you go on vacation, or you're at a conference, and you're not here at the university. And most of the library's resources are subscription-based, meaning you cannot use them unless the resource provider knows that you are a member of the University of Utah. When you're here on campus, that's easily accomplished because everything happens through IP ranges. But when you're not here, you have to tell the resource that you want to use that you belong to the, to the university. The easiest way to do that is to use something called the easy proxy. Many of you here probably have never heard of the Easy Proxy. Um, it's relatively new. It doesn't completely replace VPN, but it works the same way, but much, much better. So I'm going to walk you through how that works. Um, from the library's homepage, which you might want to bookmark because that's the easiest way to get to the library's resources. Um, the URL is library.med.utah.edu. This is what the page looks like. There are two places on the home page where you can access in remotely. There's this little key off-campus resource um, button here, and then there's a large icon over here on the side. When you click on this off-campus access button, you are going to be prompted to log into the proxy server. Looks like this. That should look familiar to most people. You've seen these login screens before. You're going to enter your unit and your password. Click login going to log you into the proxy server and then take you right back to where you were, which was the library homepage. But what's different is that now the library homepage URL has that easy proxy business up there in the URL. That lets you know you are connected to the easy proxy. And from now on, any library resource that you use from here will let you in because you've accessed the easy proxy. And from the easy proxy, you're going to access all the resources. All the library resources know. Any person who comes from this Easy Proxy server is affiliated with the University of Utah and will let you in. So using these Easy Proxy um, off-campus login icons is far and away the easiest way to access subscription-based resources. Does yes, it does. Um, if you're a long-standing VPN user and you love it and you have no problems with it, by all means, keep using it. I can tell you that in five to six years, well, vendors are being less cooperative about making their resources available by VPN. And we at the university have very little control over access by the VPN. But the Easy Proxy is actually something that is here, controlled by the University of Utah. And we configure it with every resource that we subscribe to. So we have a lot of control over it. Over time, I think the VPN is going to be less effective. Um, you're welcome to use it for now if it's still working, but I say try the Easy Proxy. 
I'm pretty sure you'll become a convert. Um, once you've logged into this easy proxy, you're able to go to any of the e-journals, databases, free sources, et cetera. <coughs> so once you've logged in, there are a bunch of databases that the university subscribes to. If you know the name of the database you want from the library homepage, I suggest going to this alphabetical list. You can just pick the letter that corresponds to the name of the database you want, click on it, and go right in. If you don't know what database you want, you want to see what's available, there is this databases A to Z list that's in the quick links box on the main library homepage. A couple of the databases that I want to just, this is by no means comprehensive, just a couple of databases that I want to point out um, to make sure everyone is aware of. One of them is the Cochrane Library. Um, how many of you are familiar with the Cochrane, Cochrane Library? Use it. Um, the Cochrane Library is a collection of databases of systematic reviews and meta-analysis where they collect and interpret the results of controlled trials and studies. They're very, um, probably as unbiased and objective as things can be in the industry and they're really good for evidence-based medicine approaches. So the Cochrane Library, um, you can sign up to receive alerts of new systematic reviews um, by a particular discipline. So that's a great way to stay on top of things. Faculty of a thousand, is a post-publication peer review process, I guess. Um, it's a database where thousands um, of researchers, and they say faculty of 1,000, there's actually about 5,000 people involved in this process right now, where subject experts will go through and identify journal articles that are of high relevance, that are game-changing, that are new information. They read the journal. They or they read the article, they give it a ranking, and they justify why the results of this article are important and are things that people should be aware of. So Faculty of 1000 is great for journal clubs, it's great for helping you keep on top of what's new in an area that may not be your primary area of research um, or fo focus, but that you, you know, want to know what's going on in a particular area. It's kind of like having someone else sort through the avalanche of articles on a particular subject and identify the three, the five, the ten that are important that you should know about. So that's faculty of 1,000. Lexicomp is great for um, pharmacology information, um, diagnostic tests, um, lab tests, that kind of thing. Dynamed and UpToDate, I think most of the clinicians here know about. It's a point of care tool. Um, I'll answer the question that I'm sure some of you are asking, which is can we access UpToDate remotely? Sadly, the answer is still no. Um, however, that is very likely to change this coming fall. So stay tuned for that. Um, and also Scopus would be our citation um, journal abstract database. So those are just some of the ones that I wanted to, wanted to point out. Ebooks. The library has a rapidly expanding collection of electronic books. Um, and there's two different ways really to get at those books. The first one is to browse an entire ebook collection, and I'm going to show you some of those. The other is to search the library catalog for the name of a particular book to see if it's available in, elec in, an, in an electronic format. So ebook collections can be accessed. Again, this is the library homepage. This quick link box here over on the left is where you get to most things, and there's an ebooks link. That takes you to an alphabetical list of all of the ebook collections that we have, and I wanted to highlight just a few of them here. Um, Access Medicine, the NCP NCBI's bookshelf, and then MD Consult. Um, all of these ebook collections in this list have multiple titles that the publishers have assembled into a subject collection, if you will. So Access Medicine, if you were to click on that, takes you into this main screen where you can browse all of the clinical textbooks that are available on Access Medicine. Um, you can browse them by subject area. You can drill down to the exact title that you want. For example, Access Medicine has um, general ophthalmology. You can go right into a particular chapter. In this case, I went into chapter 10 for the retina. You can read this chapter or read this whole book online if you want. 
Um, I will say that if you are interested in reading online, be aware that most of our ebooks have a limited number of seats associated with them. So there's a limited number of people who can be in the book at the same time. So if you do decide to read the book online, when you're done reading, please log out so that you don't block someone else from having a seat. And also, if you try and go into a book and you get a message that says something like, current user limit exceeded or no seats available. That just means that however many seats we have are currently being used. Just check back in a few minutes and see if a spot has opened up. I will say that if you forget to log yourself out of a book when you're done, uh, most books will kick you out within about 10 minutes of you not doing anything. So you're not taking up a seat permanently. But also be aware that if you're reading online and then you run off to go to the bathroom and grab some coffee and you run into a colleague in the hall and by the time you come back, half an hour has passed, you've probably been lock logged out of the book and you'll have to go back in. So that's if you're gonna read it online. Almost every ebook that the library <coughs> subscribes to has this download for handheld option, which is great because you can click that link and just put the content of the whole book, the whole chapter, um, onto either your laptop or your handheld device, put it on your iPad so you can read it on the plane, and you're reading it offline, so you're not using one of the available seats. Um, here's another one of the ebook collections that I want to point out because it's free. Um, it's put out by PubMed, their, I think it's their archive um, department, has been working with publishers to have the publishers turn over the content of these ebooks and then the National Library of Medicine hosts them on this bookshelf um, format. You can browse all the titles or you can do what I've done here in this example, which is search for a topic and just search across all available ebooks. Um, and it will show you where that concept is in. So, for example, I searched for glaucoma and there's 134 books on the uh, PubMed bookshelf that have chapters or sections that deal with that topic. The cool thing about, about Bookshelf is that it's expanding pretty rapidly. You can actually sign up for an RSS feed to get notification of when new books and new editions are added to the bookshelf. Um, most, but not all, of the books that are on Bookshelf um, are exempt from copyright, so you can use images from them, um, chapters, whole sections. So. Um, about a year ago, I would have said Bookshelf wasn't that great of a resource because they didn't have that many titles, but it's growing uh, in leaps and bounds. And then the third ebook collection I want to point out is MD Consult. Um, MD Consult has clinical texts, educational things, e journals, patient handouts, um, but the people who use MD Consult for the most part are unaware that it has a large ebook collection. You can search the ebook titles by a particular discipline. Down here, I showed ophthalmology. Or again, you can search for a concept. Um, so I searched for that diabetic retinopathy across all of the ebooks that are part of MD Consult. And you get a list of all the books that that concept is in. One of the nice things about MD Consult is that after you've searched within books, if you want, you can expand your search to everything on MD Consult and get additional information about diabetic retinopathy. You can get patient handout information, images. Um, both Access Medicine, the first ebook collection I showed you, and MD Consult have thousands of images um, available as well that you can download and, and insert into presentations um, and that kind of thing. So those are ebook collections that the library has. If you're looking for a particular book and you want to know if we have it as an ebook, the best thing to do is to go to the library catalog and put in, I should not have picked something this generic, but I just put in ophthalmology. Um, but you could put in actually the title of a book. When you search the catalog using that kind of information, you're going to get a result list of something like 42 billion because our library catalog is enormous. So when you search for the title that you want and you get this massive result list, the thing that you want to do is to use the, oh, why did my, um, is to use these um, limiters, these ref search refining options over here on the left hand side. So search for your book and then use these restrictors over here on the side to say, I only want to see books. And on top of that, I only want to see books that have full text online. That's, what, that's how you get to 
ebooks that are in our collection. So in this example, I searched for ophthalmology and then said, on, said show me only books, only books that have full text online, and then I get this long list of bo books that are all ebooks. For each record that's an ebook, clicking on this view resource link right here opens up the book. This book now can be browsed chapter by chapter online, um, or again, if you don't want to sit at your computer and read the book, use this download link, and you can download it onto your iPad, your Blackberry, your laptop, whatever, and read it offline. Okay, e-journals. That's the big one. Um, there are thousands of journal titles that the university subscribes to, and I actually this morning, um, just to satisfy my own curiosity, I wanted to find out how many journals do we subscribe to anyway? And you may or may not be surprised to know that the university has access to in the neighborhood of about 88,000 journals. So you're asking yourself, why can't I find the one I need in 88,000? Um, we do subscribe to a lot. There's no way that we can subscribe to everything. So the first thing I want to talk about is how do you find access to the things that we do subscribe to? And there are three different ways to go about trying to access electronic journals. The first one I'm going to talk about, because it's the one that I think most of you are familiar with, is using the link out icons in PubMed. So before I show you what that looks like, I want to make two points about PubMed. The first is that those link out icons only appear if you are using the library specific URL for PubMed. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. And the second thing that's important to note is that these little icons that you see in PubMed are actually browser cookies. So if your browser is not set to accept cookies, you won't see these icons. Just two things to keep in mind. Um, so if you go to the library homepage again and you use this quick links box and click on PubMed, that's taken you into PubMed, and it's small, so I don't know how well you can see it, but the URL for PubMed includes this Utah Library Holdings bit, which means now that all of the holdings that the University of Utah has will appear to you using these link out icons, assuming that your browser accepts cookies. So I've done an example here of going into PubMed and searching for a journal. You would never really search this way. I just put in the ID number of the journal. But it takes you to the article abstract. It's only on the article abstract view that you will see these icons here on the right. Um, I don't know how well you can see this. There are three icons. The first one says Elsevier full text something. That is a publisher link. If you click on that link, it will take you to the publisher's website where you will be invited to spend the $86 required to purchase the article. You don't want to click on the publisher link. The other two links um, means that the Eccles Library has access to this journal. The first one that says Eccles, check Eccles catalog means that we have it in print. Eccles Library Online means that we have online access to this journal article. Most of the time, I'm going to say maybe 85% of the time, these link out icons work correctly. And when you click on them, it will take you directly into the full text of the article. The way that link out icon works is behind the icon, there is information that we have given to PubMed saying this journal for this range and this, this issue is available to us here. So take them over here. What happens is sometimes publishers change that information and it takes us a while to be made aware of that so we can make changes in PubMed. So sometimes that lovely link that says that you should get it from the library doesn't work. So here's an example of it working lovely, right? Took me right to the article. Here's another article. Update on treatments for diabetic macular edema, and it's from Current Opinion in Ophthalmology. According to PubMed, Eccles Library Online has this journal article. Sadly, when I click on it, I get this message that says, the following article requires subscription. Buy now. And that tends to lead to some frustration and despair and why didn't it work? Um, so when that happens, don't despair. Um, you can either contact a librarian for assistance or you can try using one of the other options for accessing journals. So option two is to leave PubMed and to come back to the, li the library homepage and use this e-journal list. 
again, this quick links box on the home page, has this e-journal option. When you click on that, it opens up a search window, find e-journal, and I'm putting in the title of that journal that I was una unable to get in PubMed. So current opinion and ophthalmology. Click go. I get a list of journal articles, sorry, of journal titles. Down here on the bottom, the first one says current opinion in ophthalmology. This little tiny eye icon that's over here on the right, if you click on that, a little box pops up and it tells you exactly what range of years we have coverage for that title. Pretty useful to know. Um, and if you just click on the actual link for the journal title itself, it opens up a screen where you can see the various places you can go to find this journal. Now this bottom one says that we have this journal in this Lippincott Legacy Archive, but it's only from 1990 to 1999. The article we want is from 2008, so that's not gonna work. This top one though, Journals at Ovid, says we have this journal from 1997 on. So I'm gonna click on that, go into Journals at Ovid to see, I'm now in Current Opinion in Ophthalmology, and I'm gonna search for the journal title. If I'd remembered the citation information, I could have searched for it that way. Um, you can also just use the menu over here. I could have drilled down to the correct, um, the correct year, but I just searched by title. And there we are, Ovid found the title that I want. And look, it says that it has PDF full text. So I click on that and there is my journal. So there's the article that PubMed said we didn't have and we had to pay for and blah, blah, blah. PubMed was wrong. So going through the option two for accessing journals, which is to look up the journal title, um, I was able to navigate to where we have the full text. Option three for accessing journal articles is to use the citation linker tool, which is on the library homepage. You get, get to it um, in a way very similar to we just had in the, in the last example. You go to this quick links box on the homepage of the library, click on e-journals, but this time instead of searching by title, I'm gonna search on citation linker and enter as much citation information as I have for a particular journal article. When I click on go, the citation linker tool goes out and it looks at every single database that's available here at the University of Utah to identify every place that that citation is likely to be available in full text. So when I put in the citation information and click on go, the citation linker tool is now telling me this thing that you asked for, this American Journal of Ophthalmology, this issue, this volume issue in page number is available in full text in both of these places. So option one, you're in PubMed, you click on the link, you get the article, ha, huh, works well, then you don't have to worry. But that doesn't always work. Option two, go back to the library homepage, use the e-journal link, type in the title of the journal, um, and then go into that whole journal record and either navigate to the article that you want or type in the article title. Um, option three is to come back to the library homepage and use this citation linker tool, enter the citation information of the journal, and then the tool will go and find every single place that it says we have access to that journal article. And actually, I should say option four is you can call the reference desk and ask a librarian. That's, that's option four for accessing journal titles. So let's say you've done all of that um, and you've actually verified there's no access to this journal article that I want. Can't get it electronically, what am I gonna do? Um, you can use interlibrary loan and document delivery, which are kind of interchangeable terms. If you are in PubMed, you can use Lonesome Doc. If you're not in PubMed, you can use Iliad. Um, for both of those services, I should say that the turnaround time, if we say 40, 24 to 48 hours, I rarely see an article request that takes less than, well, I would say I rarely see a request that takes more than 24 hours. They're usually pretty, pretty quick. There is a fee for requesting articles through ILL. It's either $5 or $11. $5 is if the article is able to be filled by another institution in our state. $5. If it has to go to an institution outside of our state, it's $11. So it's kind of stinky because when you place the article request, you're not sure whether it's going to cost you $5 or $11. Um, but I guess you should go in with the assumption that this could cost up to $11. Um, but having said that, if you remember back with our 
slide of PubMed where we had the icons for ways you could get articles, that Elsevier link, um, if you had used that link to get the article, it would have cost you $86, so $11 is still a much better deal. <laughs> um, so document delivery, if you are in PubMed and you have signed up for a Lonesome Doc account, registering for Lonesome Doc is free. Um, you just have to have your account set up. If you have an account set up, you're in PubMed and you come across an article and you realize that the only option here is to buy it from the publisher, library doesn't have it, you've checked, um, the only way you can get it is through ILL. If you have a Lonesome Doc account, just while you're in PubMed, you can click on this send to, um, this send to link and that opens a drop down box. You can say that you want to order the article. You click on order, you say order the article, takes you to your Lonesome Doc sign in page, you put in your username and password, you've ordered the article, easy enough. If you're not in PubMed and you just have a journal citation that you scribbled down on the back of a napkin while you were talking to a colleague, rather than going into PubMed to find it, you can go directly to the library homepage. Under services and technology, you can scroll down to where it says interlibrary loan. That opens up a new window that just explains what interlibrary loan is and you just click on this request items via Iliad. Iliad also you have to register for, for an account the first time, but once you have an account, you just put in your username and your password, you log into Iliad. In this case, we're gonna click on request an article, and then you fill in the article request with however much of the citation information you have. And then you click go and you submit that request to interlibrary loan. I do want to, I don't know whether now is a correct time for me to have Elaine talk about this, that when you set up your account in, inter, in Iliad, when you register for Iliad, um, there is a spot where you can put down either a chart field that you want to charge these um, article fees to, or you can put down the name of a contact person. Um, okay, so Elaine says put her down, she'll pay your article fees. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of, pro yeah, a lot, a lot of programs will have the residents just put, a, you know, a responsible party in their department um, who will receive the invoices for uh, articles that are delivered through interlibrary loan. And that way you don't have to worry about pulling out a credit card or knowing a chart field. You just put in Elaine's name and, and she'll take care of that. Um, so that's access to databases and e-books and e-journals. And if you can't get the e-journal, how do you get it through ILL? There are other things that the library can help you with that I want to make sure that you're aware of. Um, this is just a slide showing you actually how to contact us. If it's during pretty much regular operating hours, seven in the morning till about seven o'clock at night at the library, the fastest way to get help is to use the IM. Um, there's pretty much always someone on, on IM and they'll respond immediately or phone. If you send an email, your response time is gonna be probably an hour or two because um, there's not someone constantly monitoring that inbox, but the IM chat and the phone, you'll get a um, quick response. Some things that the reference staff at Eccles can help you with, um, they can help you select the right databases to find published literature. They can help you develop effective search strategies. A big one is they can help you set up saved searches and alerts so that you're not constantly have to go out and look for information, that you can have things set up that information is just pushed to you, um, which is very useful. They can assist with bibliographic management tools. So if you've ever found yourself in the middle of the night saying bad words at your EndNote account, um, talk to the library. We have several people on staff who are EndNote geniuses. Um, we actually offer EndNote training uh, and they can assist you along the way using those kind of tools. They can also do um, orientation or point of need instruction on any of the resources that are available. Um, I didn't realize that a lot of people at the university did not know that you could order a literature search from the library. Um, it is a customized professional literature database searching by reference staff. The library does charge mediated search fees, but not to the University of Utah students, faculty, and staff. So for you, ordering a comprehensive literature search is free. Um, they're very good at it. Um, they do it all the time. And it's a service that I was amazed to find that a lot of people aren't even aware of. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, the library offers a lot of workshops and trainings. Uh, I mentioned EndNote. There's going to be a further training next Wednesday for those of you that have been introduced to further. 
Um, I wanted to point out some of the resources that are available for researchers. Um, the library actually has a research librarian on staff, Ad Abby, um, who does a lot of one-on-one -on -one consulting, training on how to use biomedical databases, um, does extensive, extensive literature searches, um, can help with compliance support, scholarly publishing, navigating. Um, she's a dedicated person to help support researchers um, in the health sciences. Some other resources that are specific to researchers are Myra, which is my research assistant, um, is a program that is just getting off the ground that is designed to, right now it functions by funneling researchers in the direction of where they can find answers to questions at various stages in a research cycle. Eventually, this whole Myra website will be interactive where that research cycle, um, by clicking anywhere in that cycle, it will pull information that's necessary to you at that point in the cycle. And further, which is the Federated Utah Research and Translational Health e-repository, um, is, um, it's not that this is specific to researchers, research, researchers, I think, but it has a lot of value for researchers. Um, this is a new informatics database that's just gotten off the ground uh, that Joyce Mitchell was the driver behind it. Um, I don't know whether you, your department has had further training. I know some of the departments have had um, whole department trainings, but if yours hasn't, uh, the library offers further training on an ongoing basis, and I think the next class is next Wednesday, um, and that's something you might want to look into. Some other help for research researchers that's coming soon. Um, the first is the university is going to be acquiring SciVal experts and SciVal funding, um, which if you don't know much about, they're pretty slick. Um, SciVal experts is kind of a, a database of researcher expertise and projects and funding and a way to network with other people, not only here at the university, but across the country. And then the SciVal funding piece links project interests with available funding sources throughout the country. Um, so those are coming. They were actually expected to roll out at the very end of 2011, and they're spending a little bit more time beefing up the content. So I think it's slated for later late spring, early summer. Um, but I think those are going to be a great help for researchers. And then the last thing I want to mention that's coming soon is that the university has just funded a new position in the School of Medicine for someone whose very official job title will be research concierge, um, who is going to be responsible to be the human linking element between what various labs on campus are doing. So it will be his or her job to know what projects various researchers are working on and when a researcher contacts him or her, he can say, well, you know what, you're actually looking for this, and so-and-so over here has just submitted a grant for this, and I think you two should talk. So it's actually meant to, we'll have SciVal experts, we'll have SciVal funding, and then the concierge piece is the human brain who will make a lot of the connections. I actually personally think of him as being the person that has like the, the old, old school uh, operator, you know, that plugs, you know, I'd like to talk to person number 42. He's gonna try and make those, those connections um, between researchers on campus. So that was a very quick um, run through of things that the library has available um, and things that we can do for you. I would say the takeaway message is, number one, use the easy proxy when you're not on campus. It will save you a lot of heartache and a lot of frustration. And number two, if you can't find the full text of the journal article you need by using the icons in PubMed Linkout, don't despair. Most of the time, we actually do have it. If that icon ever showed up there, it means that we have it. It probably just means that the link has died. So try using one of the other options to get to the journal article that you need or contact a librarian. So, anyone have any questions, any comments? I'm happy to field, if you have complaints, issues, things that aren't working. Questions? Yeah. 